What exactly is the organization that you're a medical officer of? Yeah. yeah, I'm a medical officer within the Office of Health Information Technology and Quality, which is part of the um, what's called the Office of Special Health Affairs in the Office of the Administrator mm -hmm. of HRSA. Now, HRSA stands for the Health Resources and Services Administration. It really is an agency within the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services that funds the largest um, primary care network in the, in the nation. It actually uh, handles many other programs that relate to um, uh, populations all over the nation in different combinations. Maternal and child health, for example. We um, have another bureau called the HIV AIDS Bureau that handles all of the HIV AIDS uh, grants making uh, infrastructure of the nation are uh, any of and these globally. Are any of these clinics in this area, in the Silicon Valley area? Oh yes, we have we have over 8,000 facilities all over the all states and territories and um, there's one here in East Palo Alto, uh, for example, uh, but they're all, all over the nation, frankly. Now I understand that you're trying to develop new models of delivering health care. What are some of the new concepts in your model of health care? Okay. Um, well, probably the most basic new um, real concept is um, the notion of an expanded care team. Uh, the notion that somehow you have a, a single um, doctor as maybe on average 15 minutes visits for four visits for a Medicare patient um, really making a difference to their health outcomes um, is uh, hard to believe um, because in, in, in practice most people spend their day living by themselves or with friends or with family. So we're interested in an expanded care team in a much, much more broader sense that includes uh, the public health department, IT staff, and the analysts of data. Um, I would say mathematicians included in the expanded care team. I would say that caregivers in the home care situations as part of a much broader sense of what it takes to stay healthy or be healthy. When you talk about a team, does that mean that the patient actually sees all these different people? Now here's the radical idea. To include the patient as part of the team in the decision making is, is really a brand new idea. Um, it's only uh, um, in, in the literature of the nursing and psychiatry that in the past the models actually included the patient. In the, every, before that, it was always what you were doing to the patient mm -hmm. in the model. Um, so yes, the idea is the patient actually has some authority and some decision-making real engagement because they're going to have a role in that decision-making through self-management uh, decision-making and, and, and they essentially will control who has access to the information because it's going to be their personal health record that's involved. So but, the bottom line is you have the patient really involved and they have control over their information, but their relationships are more um, complex with other people than had been acknowledged in the past. Uh, and some of that is health information exchange, with, you know, the electronic medical records and the hospital records and other things. Um, but uh, beyond that is the notion of collaborating together to truly improve that individual or family's care or nope. community. Now, right here, we're at this Triple Helix Conference. What does this have to do with the Triple Helix Conference? Ah, the, the futures-based agile thinking um, effort says that government and industry and academia together need to really be engaged in creating that future. And the question becomes, what specific interventions might be of value to pivot towards health rather than health care? In our discussions, uh, the, the, the Federal Health Futures Group is really interesting in, interested in pivoting from health care as a specific topic to the broader concept of health. Can health like as a national security concern, health as a national uh, important aspect of, 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 of the, the thinking that needs to be going on around the nation. Do you mean like preventive health measures do things to keep you healthy before um, you get sick? partially including prevention, but really beyond that. In other words, it's now pretty clear that people improve as part of social networking uh, uh, group process. In other words, a whole cohort of people can either gain weight or lose weight together. If you think that through, it means that human beings need to interact with other human beings to really come to certain decision making and choices about their activities. We're interested in exploring how we can do this through games, through modern technology communication systems, 
so that we can leverage those pre-existing relationships and improve on them for the outcome of improved health as opposed to just delivering better health care. Now I understand that you're having a game at this conference here on this topic. How is that game going to work and, and how do people learn from that game? There are, there are a number of games that have been invented recently that involve people purposely choosing combinations of innovations and knowledge and combinations of um, new ways of sharing all this for consensus building that, that have been independently invented by the gaming industry. And um, the question we're pivoting on a panel a little later is, can this be applied to health as a national interest? And um, we think it can. That's what we're going to explore in the panel session today that um, was put together. So the game is to help refine the model, basically? That's part of the work, yes. The, the game was developed by the gaming uh, um, industry with academia, but it has not been applied previously to health, which is what the Futures uh, Group was specifically focusing on, the notion of how do we bring other resources to bear on the discussion around pivoting towards health as a national interest. Um, so the question became, how do we converge and overlap the discussion around health in the future with the parallel processing that was going on around computers and gaming? Now you say that health is a team sport. Who are the players on this team other than the patient and his physician? Very interesting question. Yeah, our sense is that health as a team sport allows us to, for example, use a football analogy that we are mainly playing on defense. You have the individual, um, maybe if you think of the front line as the primary care or health education uh, uh, members of a team, and maybe um, you know, some of the um, uh, people in the <coughs> back line who are more like the specialists and such. And the person who's trying to manage their health care or their health um, maybe could be thought of as uh, the quarterback. Uh, and the problem with that is that they don't have necessarily all the right plays or all the right framework for conversation because you're playing pickup games. Uh, in a professional football sense of it, you would have a professional coach, you would have some other people who are thinking about the strategies of how to go from being on defense to being on offense. Um, the, the linebackers in the, in the defense posture that we're in right now are having to um, really deal with a lot of difficult situations because we don't have a, a strong enough uh, front line to really address some of the issues. So we're sort of backing up ourselves into worse and worse uh, situation. If you think of the ball position as the actual health index of the nation or the individual, we're sort of losing ground right now. And the question is how to, how to change the posture to be more on the proactively engaged or maybe offense mindset and for that, you're going to need some professional coaching. You may need some additional um, uh, players on the team, uh, for does, example. Does this have to do with social networking? For example, all of the players on this team could be on Facebook or something similar, and they yes. can all communicate instantaneously right. together. Exactly. So there, there, are, there are possibilities of combining um, people's interests and choices of, of communication i.e. things like Facebook, um, with, with trust. To, to be able to really make a difference in a person's life and their decisions, that person needs to have real trust that they're part of your team and they're not actually trying to hurt you. Um, the flip side of this is people don't always know all the individuals that might be of real help to them. And so social networking and use of telecommunications and such to help that um, might might allow you to meet other people that truly would make a difference to you. So in, in this case, maybe not another doctor for the purpose of health care, but maybe someone who helps you, um, you know, come up with a new idea for how to get fruits and vegetables to your community. So for example, there are now places um, known as um, mobile uh, veggies. Um, the idea is, just like when I was young, there was a, a mobile bookmobile, right? So a veggie mobile would be a, a little mom and pop store being driven around to cities where there are perhaps food deserts traditionally that therefore could buy, come by and you could buy fruits and vegetables, etc. Well, people wouldn't even know about these things unless you, they start sharing the fact that these concepts already exist and maybe we could help um, replicate this more further in the real world but having it 
communicate it through the virtual uh, uh, um, communication systems. Now, how much traction has this thing gained so far? A lot of people are proposing ideas for dealing with public health issues. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of demand for resources. The approach you're talking about, does that look like it's going to be the coming thing? That, that it's there, are, there are a lot of different projects in play in parallel right now. So the futures-based uh, group is really, is really um, looking at a variety of these th uh, activities. But there are already various kinds of efforts that have been launched. For example, the First uh, Lady's Let's Move initiative, um, really out of the White House, that is trying to address obesity and trying to address um, uh, the concept of communication at the local community level, for example, by getting organizations to work together and then sharing that on a national level as well. So HRSA has, in fact, already announced and launched a Healthy Weight Breakthrough Collaborative. In other words, applying some of these methodologies that we've developed over the last maybe decade and a half or so around different conditions like the diabetes collaborative or the asthma collaborative, but now applied to a much more complex situation of the notion of a healthy weight, for example, which really links public health and primary care. Mm -hmm. That has not been done previously, which is why um, it's an innovative idea. How do we connect that up with some of the um, technology pieces is another aspect of this. Mm -hmm. In the past, many of these meetings were uh, and, and initiatives were done in face-to-face uh, meet large meetings and people would go back home and share that with their local uh, partners. Nowadays, it could be done much more cost-effectively by using um, both games and telecommunication systems is, in is, an improved way. Is a lot of the same as getting the individual to take more responsibility for himself instead of going to the doctor and saying, cure me? Exactly. See, the, if the individual is able to t have that uh, sense of both responsibility and being in action, because there's no sense of just feeling responsible and then not knowing what to do. That just ends up being more stressful. Um, and some people, therefore, need help in figuring out you know, what they might want to try. That's where the social networking function comes in, with both the individual having responsibility and knowing that it's going to take a team of people, a uh, community to help you um, maybe know about some of these things that uh, might truly be of help to you. Now, what do you hope to accomplish at this conference? How will you know if you're achieving what you wanted to achieve at this conference? Well, I think a lot of the dialogues already in process and, and, and people that are meeting each other um, have already begun to stimulate new ideas, number one. Number two, there are um, a lot of uh, follow-up conversations that, will, uh, that are already being scheduled with regards to the Future Space uh, uh, Analysis Group. Um, we are actually inviting some people from the conference to join us at, at a f series of discussions that are going to be happening um, in the future. So we're essentially organizing some follow-up uh, activities already. Um, beyond that, I think that there are people who had not heard about the Future Space Group from academia and from um, industry. Um, so they're all very interesting mm -hmm. uh, types of cross-pollination in play already. So I can tell you that the visit has already been a, a tremendous uh, success. Um, it's just that I think it can go a lot further um, because of the new ideas that are being uh, um, sparked from one spark to the other. Um, so we think actually it's, quite, it's been quite, well, beyond it being valuable in terms of meeting some people, it's also been a lot of fun, mm -hmm. which is an important ingredient, I think.